Okay, um, hello everyone. Uh, greetings from uh, Seoul, Korea, the Far East. Uh, my name is Jiyoung Kwon and I teach at Hongyang University. Uh, it is a pleasure to be part taking part in this conference. Uh, sorry I could not participate in person, uh, but I hear Estonia is home, is a, is a beautiful place and home of the new Iron Lady in Europe, uh, Kaya Kalas. And I wish you the very best for a safe future in your rather uh, unsettling geopolitical circumstances. Okay, uh, my presentation today will be on digital archives as resources for artistic inspiration and production. Um, I was looking at the conference uh, timetable and I thought my presentation was 20 minutes. So uh, I, I'm a little bit kind of uh, surprised that it was limited to 10 minutes now. But anyway, I tried to read it fast, okay. So uh, let me see, I need to fast forward, do the thing myself. Okay. I'm clicking on the button. Uh, I don't know why it's not responding. All right. Okay. Uh, the advent of photography in the 19th century has provided artists in the 20th century with new ways to create artworks from the available photographic images. Francis Bacon, a British artist, uh, for example, kept an extensive inventory of images, our source material, and photographs became an indispensable tool for his expressive outcome. Uh, in study after Velazquez, Pope Innocent X, uh, painted at the height of his, of his creative career, career, for example, he makes reference to the 17th century Spanish masterpiece but distorts it to express the anguish of the sitter in an outburst of a silent scream. It is well known that the still image of Sergei Eisenstein's silent film, The Battleship Potemkin, also served as a catalyst for his final work. Bacon could continually expand his repertoire of attitudes and poses through photographs and reproductions. He would often go to the Victorian Albert Museum just around the corner from his studio where he encountered various sources of inspiration, including the sequence photographs of wrestlers by Edward Moybridge from the 1870s. Uh, he acquired the reproductions from the museum and used them as a core element of, for his paintings of two figures, as you see here. Andy Warhol, a leading American pop artist, also worked with existing photographs of celebrities to canonize them into silkscreen images. This 1964 silk screen image of Marilyn Monroe, named Shot Sage Blue Marilyn and sold for a mere $195 million uh, at Christie's earlier this month, was based on a photograph, on a, a still photograph of Marilyn Monroe from the film Niagara, a 1953 film that elevated her to star status. By referencing the image of Marilyn at a rising moment in her film career, Warhol encapsulates the American celebrity as a modern icon that would share ranks, perhaps, with Botticelli's Birth of Venus or Da Vinci's Mona Lisa. In this age when online platforms have become accessible to everyone and many museums make their collections available for fair use in the public domain, digital archives or museum collections can continue to act as an important channel of inspiration for artistic production. In the case of the National Museum of Korea, uh, it launched a project called the E-Museum, which serves as a hub to access digital images, not only from the National Museum, but from 328 institutions in the country. A total of 2.5 million digital images can be accessed through this hub. One can access these images by theme, you know, flowers and butterflies, you know, uh, national treasures, etc., or search an object by region, uh, institution, accession number, artist, country period, uh, material, 
category, size, treasure designation, place of origin, copyright restrictions, and image tag. The first category of, of sorry, the first category of region, for example, divides into 17 special districts and provinces in the country, as you see here. And the category of material also divides up into 18 subcategories, ceramics, metal, wood, leather, etc., etc., fossils. So for instance, if I were to look for a Korean Shilla dynasty headdress made of metalwork, made of metal of a size between 30 to 50 centimeters from a collection in Seoul, you know, I'll type in these um, variables and then I'll get this list of images that uh, specific images that I'm looking for. And the individual websites of 328 museums can also be accessed by region. So if I were to click a province here, Gyeonggi-do province, uh, I'll get the list of the museums within that province. And I can search this by the uh, nature of the governance, be it national, public, private, uh, or university museum. So the, each of these sites can be accessed and then uh, access their digital collection. Uh, individually. During the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the National Museum tried to activate the use of digital archives by launching a digital image-based video contest. Uh, here is the announcement on the left and the final uh, submitted work on the right uh, and the ORDs, uh, you know, presentations. Um, so this was an attempt to activate the digital uh, archives with the public um, and also there was a curation, okay, next, next slide, a curation contest using the digital archives, which were efforts on the part of the museum to activate the use of digital archives. Now I'd like to turn to my attention to a contemporary Korean artist who has been actively amalgamating uh, digital images, traditional images with today's high technology. Uh, Lee Lee Nam, uh, born 1969, studied sculpture at the beginning, but his interest in animation later, later led him to media art. He has been, he has been likened to and influenced by Nam Jun Pek, a Korean-born pioneer video artist. Lee places new technologies at the heart of his artistic approach while synthesizing significant art historical images using multiple new media techniques to breathe life into classical artworks. One of his favorite subjects has been the Diamond Mountains that you see him working on in the background panels here. The Diamond Mountains is a famous mountain site now located in North Korea that has been a recurrent subject of painting and literature with its breathtaking views of vertical peaks. The painting on the left is by the famous landscape painter Jung Seon from 18th century Korea, where the rocky peaks on the right and the earthy mountains on the left are arranged in a circular composition divided by a stream running in between. This harmonious arrangement of contrasting forms of nature is a symbolical representation of the laws of the universe according to Taoism, a Far Eastern philosophy that viewed the world composed of contrasting forces of yin and yang that collide into a whole. In modern Korea, the Diamond Mountains has also become the symbol for Korea's reunification a place where South Koreans yearn to visit freely one day. Oh, sorry, this. Lily Nam takes this painting steeped with symbolism into a backdrop of tranquil sounds of nature, transporting us, okay, next image. Transporting us, um, to a world of peaceful serenity with the changing colors of the season. As the image slowly starts to take on a life of its own, the music gradually changes to a gloomy tone. One hears a world filled with sounds of industrialization, overpopulating every inch of available space. City lights and skyscrapers soon cover the landscape with a sinister tone of warplanes and helicopter hovering above. Clouds of smoke gradually fill the air. 
indicative of explosives and suggestive of war. This visual storytelling technique that is employed, employed takes us on a journey through the history of Korea, touching upon the experiences of the country. Included is the memory of the Korean War in 1950 that was a byproduct of the Cold War, when jet fighters confronted each other in an air-to-air -air combat. North and South Korea have been split into two sovereign states since 1953, which remains so today. By transforming the idyllic scene of a symbolic site into an apocalyptic scene of mass destruction, the artist communicates to a contemporary audience the fear of dystopia and potential war. In another work, he takes two utopian landscapes paintings from China and Korea, namely Early Spring by the 11th century Chinese master Guo Xi and A Dream Journey to the Peach Blossom Land by the 15th century Korean court painter An Gyeon. Both paintings represent the pinnacle of monumental landscape painting in the respective countries when the philosophical idealization of nature materialized into a distinctive artistic form of ink painting. The, the painting on the right was drawn upon the request of a prince who had a dream he visited the peach blossom land or symbol for utopia. So the, the painting is read from left to right there are these rows and the final uh, climactic point where the peach blossom land appears at the end of his journey. Now what Lee does, he merges these two idealized images into one digital painting as if sc scaling up the utopian vista. He then takes us through a peaceful scenery of the four seasons that characterize Korea, the spring laden with azaleas, showery summer, colorful autumn, and snowy winter. Elements move slowly and silently, engaging the viewer with a hypnotic invitation to travel to another world that is imagined. A strong poetic tone exudes from his creations, creating a cross-cultural dialogue full with references to our history and technology. Lili Nam also, also playfully intervenes with Western masterpieces. Here, one empty frame is placed next to another with Van Gogh's self-portrait inside a museum setting. It occurred to him that Van Gogh might feel claustrophobic locked up in a museum room for centuries and decided to free him from the confined setting. So to carry out this task, he involves the ants. Yeah, he involves the ants that are coming to help. So there are these little ants that move the pieces who tear the painting piece by piece and move it to the adjacent frame. So this is the next image. The one, the ants work very hard. And finally, uh, the mission is accomplished. So Van Gogh is out of, the, out of the room. This playful interference with European masterwork is also applied into uh, another piece, into this piece, where he juxtaposes Infanta Margarita Teresa in a blue dress by Velasquez with an image of a beauty by Shin Yun Bok from 18th century Korea. The eight-year-old Spanish royalty, later to marry the Holy Roman Emperor, is shown wearing an expansive blue silk dress adorned with silver borders. On the right, an anonymous, anonymous Korean beauty is shown wearing a hanbok dress, a traditional Korean attire composed of a short upper jacket tied with a knot and a full long skirt. Now he decides to carry out a friendly exchange of dresses. Um, between these two innocent youths, and the ants again become the agents that carry out the task. Slowly, torn pieces of their dresses move from one painting to another, and eventually, uh, the, two the two girls have changed their clothing, ending up with a Spanish girl wearing a hanbok dress and a Korean girl wearing a 17th century European dress. An imaginary Cultural exchange between these two figures has been achieved with some help of dig digital maneuvering. The pool of digital images from which, from, uh, which he draws inspiration spans widely. He engages with traditional Korean art, European old masters, as well as digital art, going back and forth between East and West, 
past and present, dreams and reality, thereby exploring the differences and junctures between cultures. He explores the dynamics between the opposites of lyricism and violence, the beauty and the ominous, and the contrast of situations. Some have likened to him to uh, liken him to a child running through the halls of a museum and making imaginary graffiti onto these works, expanding their possible boundaries and connections. He enlivens and enrich and enriches their essence, transporting the viewer into an interactive and animated sphere of video art in 3D. He explores the memory of wars that once tore apart and disconnected societies and creates dialogue in terms of how new generations are confronted with the past. By using video as his medium, he's critiquing the society in which we live by responding to, today, to today's generation and hyperconnectivity. His studio in Gwangju is known to have a well-equipped li library of Western and Eastern art, and his studio walls, as you see here, are pasted with pin images that he would gaze upon now and then for a creative lightning of an unexpected vision. As such, his application of animation to art history breathes life into classical artworks, bringing them back to a contemporary situation with new meaning. Reappropriating heritage by using digital manipulation, he's paving a new road of video art, which has earned him the title as a rightful successor of Nam Jun Pek. So digital images tra of traditional materials can provide artists with new sources of inspiration and creativity. The digit digitalization of tradition in the end, be it artworks, documents, or living traditions, can become great archival resources for new artistic production in the form of media art, film, video, or performance art. As such, the digital turn of tradition is not only imperative in order to safeguard our heritage, but also a vital means to generate new forms of artistic production for the future generation. All right, thank you for um, listening. And um, there is a, a website that lists um, many of his works. And could I share that with the audience? Yes, I think she can. Uh, you can just show the page so that people can note the, uh, note the address. Please do so. Okay. Ah, uh, okay, sorry. The tech uh, replied that uh, you won't be able to share your screen. They can only show your present, uh, presentation. But can she uh, comment on the uh, workshop platform? Yes, you can, uh, for example, after the presentation, you can uh, send a comment on your presentation uh, platform and uh, we will note it there. Okay. okay. And thank I will you. remind that to the people. So thank you for your interesting presentation. I particularly like the little ants who did their <laughs> tricks, freeing and yeah. liberating people. Does somebody still have questions, or shall we give a row of applause? I checked the workshop. There were no questions. Does still somebody in the audience want to ask? So now, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,